Douglas Cooling and Heating. Serving the Birmingham area for 38 years. 988-3706. That's Douglas. I'm James Spann. This is the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video for Tuesday, the 4th of January, 2011. A lot of folks kind of getting back in the swing of things today. Many school systems are back. We're back. So let's get in here and talk about the weather. I guess the big buzz is the potential for a, a mid-month cold wave here. Hmm. Now let's look at the sky cam shots early this morning. First off, coming from Tuscaloosa. That's uh, looking to the northwest from the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse. The sky's mostly cloudy, some high clouds around, and it's uh, cold with readings around freezing, not as cold as yesterday. There's a look at downtown Gadsden and downtown Decatur up in the Tennessee Valley. All right, we've got the a little feature out there that produced some snowflakes at Las Vegas beginning to kick out, and that uh, could uh, bring a few raindrops to parts of Alabama tomorrow. Cold uh, polar vortex over Canada, helping to deliver colder air that we will feel late this week and over the weekend. But the really cold stuff is down the line. Here's a look at the numbers. They uh, range from 27 at Gadsden to 40 at Montgomery. Uh, 32 for Birmingham and Aniston, 30 in Tuscaloosa. Highs today should be in the uh, mid-50s, and we'll call it partly sunny. Pretty decent day. All right, uh, North America. Of course, what catches our attention is up there at the very tippy top of that screen around the Arctic Circle. That is uh, minus 50, 50 below zero Fahrenheit. And uh, that is uh, cross uh, air that has crossed over the pole from Siberia. And we all know how cold that can be. And that's something we'll have to watch. Whether ultimately the big trough sets up out west or over the east, really, we don't know that yet. If we get that in full blast, if we catch the edge of it again this early in the game, we just don't know. But no doubt somebody, in fact, a lot of folks over parts of the United States, the continental United States, going to be very cold down the line. Uh, check the watch warning map. Man, is it quiet. Goodness, no weather headlines at all. One winter weather advisory for lake effect snow over Michigan and uh, one up over New York, and that's it. I mean, just quiet. Oh, and a wind advisory out over uh, the mountainous region of uh, the border of California, Nevada. And the QPF chart, overall rain for the next five days, valid through the uh, weekend, or I'm sorry, through Saturday evening at 6 o'clock, and uh, this is suggesting nothing for the northern third of the state and a little bit near the Gulf Coast, maybe up to a half inch with this feature tomorrow. Let's take a look at the GFS. This is the 06Z run, the global forecast system. And uh, again, you can see the two distinct streams, the southern stream, which is mischievous, a lot of uh, energy involved. There's one Vortmax over Arizona, another one lingering off to the uh, west of Baja. In the northern stream, helping to deliver the cold air. And at some point, if this keeps up, there could be some winter weather fun and games down the line. But it's not going to happen this week. Uh, down below that again today, uh, we'll call it uh, partly sunny. Temperatures about where they should be. Highs in the uh, mid-50s. Both the uh, GFS and the NAM are showing 56 today. All right, tomorrow there's that impulse coming through. And you can see it tries to squeeze out a little scattered light rain around here. But not very much. Uh, even a few snowflakes up around uh, Jackson, Tennessee, and Cape Girardeau, Missouri. But the better rain should be near the Gulf Coast, where, again, they might pick up a half inch down at Gulf Shores and uh, Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Panama City. But certainly no big deal. Cloudy, maybe a few raindrops, and that's it. Thursday, that feature is on by. Uh, Thursday will be a dry day. And, again, low 50s where we should be. Friday, that uh, vortex over Canada dropping south, forming a trough over the east, and it turns colder. And uh, down below that, uh, again, the model continues to suggest snow flurries down into maybe, just maybe, uh, Jackson or DeKalb counties in northeast Alabama. We're not going to mention it for us. We'll just say breezy and colder with a mix of sun and clouds. That might drop down enough snow to make the ground wide up over the uh, Great Smokies. In fact, it will if this is right. Uh, and again, the high here would be in the 40s. And there's Saturday starting off the weekend. Uh, vortex sets up over New England. Yeah, we see that shortwave energy off to the west, over West Texas and New Mexico. Down below that, Saturday should be a dry day and a uh, kind of a chilly day. High should be in the upper 40s after a low in the uh, down in the 20s, maybe low in mid 20s. Uh, day will be dry. All right, Sunday, uh, that uh, feature. 
that the West begins to creep in here. And again, the GFS beginning to agree more with the uh, European model. But there's the GFS look. This is midday, noon on Sunday, and it's still got most of the precipitation off to the West. And the uh, critical thickness line is over the Tennessee Valley, and this is suggesting there might be some snow at that feature north of a line from, say, Tulsa to Little Rock. And uh, again, it will be moving in here later Sunday or Sunday night. The European continu continues to be a lot faster. In fact, this is Sunday morning at 6 o'clock. And uh, this thing has a, a big rain event going on here. And, uh, of course, the critical thickness value is up north. It's a lot warmer. But having said that, uh, that cold air could be pretty shallow. And if the European is right, we'll have to look at maybe some idea of maybe a brief, brief period of freezing rain or sleet at the onset early Sunday morning or maybe after midnight Saturday night. Confidence is very low here because of the timing issues and the models. One way or the other, it doesn't look like it will be a big deal in terms of any winter weather threat. For now, we'll just mention a chance of uh, rain on Sunday, I think. And the Europeans suggesting we might pick up, uh, you know, one half inch of rain with this thing. Moisture should be fairly limited, though. And then Monday, back to the GFS, you can see really it, it's still kind of struggling. It's still got uh, a chance of some light rain here. And then Tuesday, finally, a surface low begins to form as a series of waves are coming through. And uh, it's got the surface low that's rather broad near Lake City, Florida. And uh, some light rain still going on here Tuesday and maybe some snow over Tennessee and extreme North Alabama. But the big story is not that. It's up there in uh, the Northwest Territories of Canada. That is a 1,064 millibar high. Woo, man, that's cold. And the core of it is coming down over the western states. You can see it. Things nosing down across the Rockies, down into uh, the Texas Panhandle. Uh, not involving the east. It's mainly involving the west. We'll go to uh, uh, Wednesday of next week. And again, uh, you can see that uh, we'll have to watch that. I mean, it, it's it, clearly the, the sheer weight of that alone is going to push it down in here. And then uh, the uh, 13th, the core of the uh, cold air is over Montana and North Dakota. And it's got the 540 line over the Tennessee Valley. But let me show the European on the same day. Again, this is the uh, 13th. Now, first off, the, the, you're looking at the GFS, 540 line over Huntsville. Let me show the European for the same day, 540 line huh, to Tampa Bay. So which model is going to be right? The European wants to drive it more to the east, while the GFS wants to keep that brutally cold air more to the west. Which model is right? I don't know. I, you know, just haven't done this forever. When you see a 1,065 millibar high coming up, it, it makes it awfully cold here. I, I don't think we can escape the very cold air. Whether we get the, the, it just runs right over us or we catch the edge of it, we don't know that yet. But certainly that's going to be a highlight. Uh, then a couple of days later, if by chance that cold air gets in here, you know we'll have an active southern stream and something like that might produce an icy mess if the cold air is shallow or maybe some snow. And uh, on the 17th, again, th th you can see the, the pattern setting up there, that a very cold vortex over Canada and an unsettled southwest flow aloft down here. And again, that looks icy for somebody in the northern fringe of all of that. If this is right and on the 19th, uh, again, the trough noses down in here, very cold. Another 1,040 millibar high dropping down from the south. The Arctic Oscillation goes uh, negative again out there toward mid-month, so... You can see uh, that there's great concern that we might have a cold wave and some winter weather mischief along the way, but nobody, and I mean nobody, knows specifics at this point. How cold, if we do see any snow or ice, but just be aware all of that stuff is out there on the table. Might be an interesting month ahead. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog, alabamawx.com. And if you're local to us, we invite you to watch us on the uh, television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless. Each day there are new stories to tell about the people who live here and the place we call home. All of the faces that I see, all of the places close to me. We're all part of all the best things about home. Sharing your stories on ABC 3340, Alabama's news leader.